I'm Glenn Tinley with Winnipeg Win and Winnipeg Women Magazine, and I am here today with a very special guest who just came in from Italy. This is Diego Bonato. Welcome Hi. to Winnipeg. My pleasure. Hi. Uh, Diego is here. Um, you are the winemaker um, yeah. at Tolani Wines. How <laughs> does a real young guy like you uh, become the winemaker at uh, at at a at a wine estate in Italy. I mean, yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm born in in the wine world because uh, my family has got uh, a little wine estate okay. in the northeast and a little region called Colliugani, uh close from Padua. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so I used to live uh, with with vines and and wine around. Then, of course, when you are young, you don't care much about, uh, you know, what your parents are doing and you, you uh, don't usually believe that that is what you want to do in, right. in the future. So I study engineering first uh, at college and then I realized that it was not for me and start to feel the passion for wine. Mm -hmm. uh, just working as a waiter uh, during my studies okay. and I uh, started to feel that I wanted to know more about wine. And, and how to make it better, why one wine was better than another one. I didn't know that, right. you know, so I said, okay, if I, you know, I, I would like to go to the university, but, uh, you know, I, I need to study something that I really want to study, yeah. and, and that was winemaking, so I studied winemaking and viticulture. Let's step back a little bit. You were, we were talking a little bit before, um, the, a lot of the vineyards were just planted in 2000. Is that how yeah. did it, when everything started? Yeah, everything starting in 1999 when when Mr. Tolaini bought the estate, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, all you know they, they start all the planting in 2000, and from 2000 to 2004 they planted all the vineyards. So the, the the vines are pretty pretty young. Yeah. Still, what is sort of the ideal age for for uh, for vines? Okay, depends. That depends a lot from the density mm -hmm. of the vine. So how many plants you have in a hectare? Okay. Okay, but uh, usually the plants start to make uh, very good fruit uh, when they start to have between seven to ten years. Okay. And after ten years, they start to have very good fruits because the plant is balanced. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, okay. a, it's a little bit like uh, you know the person, you know, the teenagers. Uh, it's a little bit more unbalanced, right. and right. then you, you get older a little bit, and you start to be more. <laughs> you hope anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably more consistent with the with the vines than it is with the teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and then there is not a really ideal age for the vines, but uh, for sure, older is the vine, better is gonna be the fruits uh, because they get, especially for the, the reds, mm -hmm. better tannins, better phenols. So uh, it's gonna produce uh, lower yield and better fruits. Does it, does it start to decline after, you know, at it's, a certain point you have to start replanting and? Yeah. Yeah, look, the the average in Italy is uh, 25 to 30 okay. years, then the people replant that. But uh, in, in very high quality wine production, uh, it's not uh, this the problem. You can try to keep uh, the vines for as long as you can, yeah. because uh, uh, the problem that you have to replant is when the, the yield the decrease too much yeah. okay but if you produce very low yield like we do six seven hundred grams of grapes per plant uh, even 150 years old plant is going to produce more than that so because you're not sort yeah. of stressing and tiring it out exactly okay okay well let's um let's talk about the wines yeah um there's sort of uh four um different wines coming out of the vineyard right now. El Paso, Val de Sante, um, a, a new one that just started coming out this year, a Chianti Classico, and then a Pico Nero. So yeah. let's start with El Paso, which um, you you might call sort of an everyday wine. An everyday wine. El Paso is the, uh, one of the more traditional wine in our area because Sangiovese mm -hmm. is uh, the local variety. Okay. Uh, in, in Tuscany, in right? Tuscany. So that's yeah. in Tuscany. Sangiovese is sort of the yeah called the home. Yes, fruit. exactly. Yeah. yeah, we call them autochthonous variety. Okay, yeah, born there, 
and uh, uh, we are in the Chianti Classico wine region mm -hmm. and you know there is the Chianti which is a big region in Tuscany and there is the Chianti Classico which is a smaller region inside the Chianti which is where the best Chianti come out okay and so you know it's, it's the, the region that is excellent for producing Sangiovese so Al Paso is Sangiovese 85% and Merlot 15%. Okay. The Sangiovese is a little bit crispy and acid mm -hmm. and usually it's got a lack of color a little bit. Okay. And so we add some Merlot because it brings softness, roundness, a little bit of color and it makes it more gentle, okay. more easy drinkable and more pleasing with the food. What makes the difference between El Paso and then I'll jump to a Piconero yeah. which is sort of the flagship wine for the for the vineyard um, so you sort of think okay here's what our flagship wine this is what we want it to be yeah this is what we want to be known for yeah um, and then you start to go to back sort of back step from there to say okay here's how we're gonna do that yeah well varieties first so I uh, think Piconero is a blend of 65% uh, Merlot mm -hmm. with 30% Cabernet Sauvignon and 5% Petit Verdot. Okay. So, so no Sangiovese. No Sangiovese Sangio in, uh, in it. So and then uh, uh, the the mm, the aging is totally different and the kind of uh, uh, how how you know we select the grapes. Uh, we have much smaller grapes with smaller berries. Mm -hmm. with uh, the structure and the density, the, the weight of the wine is completely different. Okay, well let's, uh, uh, I can't sit here with four bottles of wine on the table and not, and not taste <laughs> some. Sure. <laughs> it's almost, it's I, I can too. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's try, we have, we have two bottles open. One is the Val de Sante. Yeah. Uh, and the other is the Chianti. So which, yeah. which one do you want to try first, the Val de Sante? Yeah. Okay. Let's try the Val de Sante first. Um, so in the, what, is, what, uh, is the what's the percentage in the varietals in, in here the, the grapes that are in this the Val di Santi is 75% Cabernet Sauvignon yeah with 20% Sangiovese and 5% Cabernet Franc in the beginning the Val di Santi was a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Cabernet Franc okay and then we decided to change and instead that put Merlot we add Sangiovese in it so we start to make it uh, as a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Sangiovese and Cabernet Franc. And why? It's because uh, uh, Tuscany has got a very hot climate mm -hmm. and uh, we want to make always fresh wine that match very well with food yes. and also with typical Italian food especially. So uh, we thought that with the Merlot mm, the blend was good but we could get better adding Sangiovese okay. so it keeps freshness, keep a little bit of acidity. Because, it's l because of the lighter color and the just the lightness the, of the wine, it the lightness, it up. but also because the the Sangiovese by itself has got more acidity okay. than than Merlot. Than Merlot. Okay, it's just a genetic genetic uh, difference in the grapes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, somebody who's uh, who's tasting a Val de Sante, well, I mean, you're gonna always everybody's gonna be a little bit different in how they're gonna taste it. What type of typical Italian foods would this be best with? Uh, it's very Just good with... Just a pasta or a fish or a... No, 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 for sure. Very good with pasta, but pasta with the red sauce. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, and uh, for sure also with some meat. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, barbecue. Uh, okay. Beef in general. And red meat. Yeah, red yeah. meat. Okay. Red meat. So that is very tasty, and I, I had I had had some El Paso. I, I find that the, last night I was drinking El Paso in anticipation of meeting you. Yeah, <laughs> my pleasure. And um, I find this to be a little, uh, to me, completely. I'm I'm the uneducated yeah. wine drinker, but I enjoy a, sure probably over enjoy red wine like most of the people that. This I find to be a little bit, I don't want to say um, uh, smoother, not smoother, uh, just a little bit more um, substance to it. Yeah. The, I found yeah. the El Paso a little bit lighter, more yeah. full-bodied in, yeah. in this. Yes, for sure. It's more full-bodied, it's more 
um, we can say impenitive mm. as a wine. Okay, uh, it's not as easy as you know the Al Paso, uh, and it's uh, foods with more structure as the wines got more structure. Right. When you match food and and wine, you know you you need to make sure that the food and the wines got the same amount of concentration of aromas of flavors. Okay. Okay. Because if you if you match uh, uh, a light food with a uh, you know um, more a full more body dense, wine, full body wine, yeah. the wine is gonna cover the food, and oh. and the match is, is no good because you you can just feel the wine at the end, okay, and, and the food disappear. Okay. Well, let's uh, put this aside and switch. So now the Chianti. Sure. Um, th- this is the newest wine. Uh, the other wines have been out for few years now this one just this year yes why why the time difference why the delay okay so uh, as I say it's the um, the vines were planted all starting in 2000 okay and since 2004 and uh, uh, in our region the Sangiovese is so special because uh, it's the unique region where the Sangiovese in Tuscany you know, grows so well because it's very hard to grow okay. and very hard to get ripeness and you know good good Sangiovese and to do that takes time because uh, especially for the young vines right. uh, they very much feel the difference in terms of weather and in terms of uh, uh, climate okay so so a hotter summer can or a cooler summer could really offset yeah what happens you know harvest time and what what the quality of the fruit is going to be exactly and uh, until the the plants has not uh, roots deep enough to have always water and keep a little bit of freshness from the soil yeah you know, it's hard to have a, a very balanced uh, uh, ripening okay so uh, so this is 100% Sangiovese yeah. fruit single vineyard um, and so this is 2008 yes and so it's just coming out now 2011 so it's exactly. been two years plus four months in the bottle yes exactly okay. and what should you what what would be the difference I mean I'm, I'm, I'm going to say even before I taste it lighter than the Val de Sante because of the Sangiovese being I mean, you can just tell in the color. It's not yeah. as deep of red. And, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. And it, as it... Uh, this is typical of the Sangiovese. Uh, the color is less, less deep than, than the other, less dark. Mm-hmm. Not every year. For example, we have some 2010 now, or the wine that is going to be darker than this one. Okay. The 2009 that will be the next release is going to be lighter than this. Okay. That's, that's you know, the just, single vineyard. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. just the way the, the grapes were. Yeah. yeah. And okay. uh, But uh, it's typical for Sangiovese. And uh, what we look in Sangiovese is not the deepness of the color or, you know, to have a wine with full body. Mm-hmm. Okay. We, we want to have a round wine balance, but with freshness, uh, long wine, and a little bit different from the style of the other wines that we make that are blends mm-hmm. because you know it's a little bit unique okay it's Sangiovese and the Sangiovese by itself is more acid and match well with uh, uh, more fat foods okay. okay so it's almost to break down the fatty yeah. you know to help yeah and clean your mouth right okay yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay okay all right Definitely uh, uh, spice, you know, more. Not, I don't want to say acidic, but just more spicy and yeah, you know, spicy, more fresh. Yeah, you can uh, feel it makes your uh, mouth to produce. Um, we call it saliva. Saliva, yeah, saliva, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So it's so because it's clen- it almost cleans. like a cleansing. Yeah, it yeah. cleans, and you feel the aftertaste for long. Okay, okay, you keep smelling it and the the back palate yeah so uh, this is the characteristic of the Sangiovese now is this because it's the first year that you've had that that you've had this wine um, is it exactly what you wanted it to be oh I mean or, or is it just no no no, no. it's never it's perfect we're, we're, right nah, no no <laughs> it's never perfect we always have something to improve of course but uh, we're very happy 
for to be the first year yeah uh, because uh, the 2008 eight uh, hasn't been a, um, an easy easy uh, year right okay, so I think we did pretty well and we are happy with it because uh, it's uh, it's traditional it's traditional um, yeah probably you guys heard about the international wines uh, <laughs> which is you know made from Cabernet Sauvignon um, Merlot more international varieties yes. Syrah yeah okay and uh, uh, this wine at the opposite is traditional no it's something that we want to uh, be a wine modern because mm-hmm. we like a modern wine say easy understandable uh, that everyone can drink but also that uh, remind you the very typical wine from Tuscany okay. Okay? Uh, yeah. because of course uh, in all our wines you can feel that they come from Italy they come from Tuscany because yeah. you can feel the terroir but this in particular way y- you can say it's typical because it's more fresh it's more like people was always has been used to drink okay well let's uh, finish off with the Pico Nero just uh, again it's the sort of the flagship um, wine um, what are the what are the what's the fruit that is in there again? Uh, it's a sixty five percent Merlot mm-hmm. with thirty percent Cabernet Sauvignon and five percent Petit Verdot. Okay, so um, probably not a lot of people have heard of Petit Verdot. Yeah. Um, what does that do to the the Merlot and the Cabernet Sauvignon? It brings uh, acidity. Uh, spiciness and freshness to the wine okay and you need to use a uh, very little amount because otherwise it, it comes up to it the overpowers blend, right? exactly okay and uh, it's a uh, very dark in color uh, with a lot of freshness mm-hmm. and that is what it brings and gives to the wine the, the possibility to age very well for a long long time okay and in fact it's a variety that comes from from Bordeaux mm-hmm and uh, especially the Pomerol area, they use it a lot. Okay. And is it um, why that versus like a Sangiovese? Just you want the depth of color? Oh, well, maybe a color could be one reason, but it's not that. It's that uh, you know the the to make uh, wines that uh, has got a lot of uh, concentration and that are really good and you can age for really many 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 years. Sangiovese is not going to necessarily age a long time because it just doesn't have the tannins and the in the depth. Yeah, it ca- it can age yeah. for long but uh, it's uh, uh it's got uh, we can say uh l- we have less probabi- probability mm-hmm. that can age uh, uh, a Sangiovese uh, more than a Cabernet, okay? The Cabernet Sauvignon, the Merlot, and the Petit Verdot usually, okay, in the average, age more, okay. more than than a Sangiovese. Okay. Then there are exceptions. Okay, if you have a very good Sangiovese, it's, it's got no problem to age very well. Right. Uh, but it's more difficult to get that. Yes, exactly. Whereas a Petit Verdot, exactly. Is, that's what it's sort of known for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I will say that uh, you're doing a darn fine job. Because these are all very good wines. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, um, how long are you in uh, Canada? You you came in obviously uh, to visit your brother and yeah. to and to see the, uh, the the family that owns the wine that yeah. that's from here. And, uh, you've been to Toronto. You're going to New York. Yes, exactly. Now I've been in Canada till Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I've been to Toronto, and uh, I'm going to New York next. Uh, a uh, quick visit also because it's my first time here mm-hmm. okay and i want to understand more about you know the, the your culture your your tradition and mm-hmm. your you know how also also for how you guys you know drink the wine and what do you think about that and why do you prefer one than the other one right. you know so it's all very interesting and then have a fun for sure yeah, <laughs> fun. and then from new york you go back to yes, go back yes, to italy yes go back early because the 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 next harvest is supposed to be early, so we need to get ready. Yeah, that. it's uh, when would it start? End, uh, of, end of August? No, no, luckily not that early, but beginning of September, maybe five to ten. Okay, September. Just depending on where the heat and exactly. weather and things yeah, like that. Yeah, the weather. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Cheers. Cheers to you. It's been a pleasure getting to know you, and uh, thank you very much for uh, 
talking to us a little bit about the the, the wines that you're uh, creating. Thank you, thank you for giving me the possibility oh. and the opportunity to yeah to you're, speak you're, with you about that. You're doing a great job, and uh, and I look forward to more years of uh, more great wines. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And um, so that is our conversation with Diego uh, from Tulane Estate Winery in Tuscany, Italy, and uh, his first visit to Canada, and uh, we will speak to you again soon.